Welcome to Rust the Console Edition. This is part two of my guide for new players, and it seems my favorited game is not showing. So I had a little bit of a problem with it. I ended up just restarting, and hopefully that'll work out. I have favorited, and I was hoping that my server would show up under history. So let's try that one. There it is, okay. Uh, and as you can see, you can use your right trigger to toggle on or off the little star uh, to make it favorited so you can go back in on the same server you had spent all this time uh, building your base gathering supplies weapons etc i don't have any weapons yet but i'm getting there like i've got spears and things but um i'm just letting you show that the typical load screen hopefully i'm not going to hear water i'm actually going to hear forest sounds that'll tell me that i'm not on the beach somewhere that i'm actually in my base um the other day nothing loaded up i think they did a complete wipe because we are in the beta they're still testing and fixing as they go but i'm absolutely enjoying the game it is a lot of fun so let's speed this up and we should be logging into our world any second now. Hoping for those forest sounds. And I've loaded into my base. I can still see the wood roof. So it looks like I put enough upkeep supplies in the tool cupboard, the TC. Um, you have to load that thing with whatever supplies you've used. Like I have a stone foundation and wood walls and rubes so i have to make sure as you can see on the right corner there uh, my upkeep supplies should last for 14 days i don't know if that's hours actual hours or whether or not it is actually 14 days the server wipes once a week so i'm just taking a quick look through uh, my two little uh, storage containers and making sure i still have all of my belongings everything looks good um, i'm here to show you how to build your first building now I'm here inside the tool cupboard. This is where I store all of my building supplies and the game itself as your building starts to decay over time it will pull those supplies out of your tool cupboard and use them to maintain your building or else walls will disappear, ceilings, things like that. And the base I'm going to show you how to build is exactly this one. It is one floor foundation square and one triangular foundation and as you can see as I leave my little home the door opens out and the outside door opens in this way if I open my outside door if I didn't have that other one people could rush in and take things out of the tool cupboard and my storage devices this way it acts as an airlock as they call it so I'm going to show you how to build this particular base and put locks on the doors now I'm still in the safe zone. Somebody could take the time to either throw a rocket at it or shoot at it, but they would be instantly hostile to the safe zone. So they have a limited amount of time and weaponry to actually break through and get at my loot. So I'll stay here for the time being. So I'm just going to pick a nice uh, patch of sunny flat ground over here and show you the build process of I think they call it a one by two or maybe it's one by one maybe it's one by one it's been a long Monday okay what I'm trying to determine here is if I'm inside the safe zone when I put down that triangular foundation I definitely want it right on the edge of the safe zone And in addition to the wood and stone you'll use to construct the building, you'll also need a blueprint. It is a basic blueprint just used for building. It's nothing item specific and also a hammer. So as you can see, you need about a hundred uh, wood to actually craft the hammer. They will take a few seconds and show up in the bottom left corner and then eventually into your menu. You just saw the blueprint come in and then the hammer. Uh, in addition to this what they call the common menu here I actually found out that that entire strip that's grayed out um, I can show you all of that ex absolutely everything that you can use and build in this game that doesn't require you to learn a blueprint so I'll show you that in a little bit so what I want to do is put down right at the edge of the safe zone 
You can see it turn from red to blue. I think I'll point it this way. And I'm going to go ahead and switch out to the triangle piece because I want my doorway as close to the safe zone as possible. So I just pull the left trigger on the Xbox controller or whichever controller you're using and it's giving me the wrong item. So I have to go back in and make sure I pick triangle foundation. There it is. And I want to put it right at the edge of the boundary. So if I leave my house, I'm okay. Let me see if I can get that put down. And it extends out a little bit further. That's still within the build area. It'll extend further up towards that little uh, valley there before it hits those rock cliffs. Okay, so we have the triangle piece for our airlock. And now we need a square piece. There we go, up to the top. It takes a little getting used to on a controller. I, I can be very frustrated by the build uh, menu here. I'm getting used to it. It just can be very infuriating and flips across to something else. There we go. There's our floor. And you just pull the trigger and your floor piece is down. Now you always, always want to build on the inside of your structure. Always on the inside, never on the outside. And I'll show you why in one second. Just checking to see if everything lines up. Okay. Let's start by putting up our doorways. Okay, I want to put one this way. It'll be just like my house that you saw. And as you can see, it's all blue. And that piece is up. Let's put the other one here while we have it in the menu. Now we can put up the solid walls. Toggle down to those. There we go. Now this is the reason you want to be on the inside. The X is the soft side of the wall. This side without the X is the harder side of the wall. If they were flipped, they would be much easier to destroy. So if you're seeing the X's or a lighter color on the outside, you know you've put them down incorrectly. So right now everything is facing correctly on the inside. Now I can go ahead and put, let's see, we put the roof up next. It still won't let me choose. Let's switch up to the roof. And there it is. Basically, I'm using floor pieces as the roof. This way, if I decide I want to uh, put a ladder up inside or expand it to a two-story, it's easier to do rather than using the actual peaked roofs. And there we go. Okay, it looks good. Okay, the build menu, the blueprint and the hammer, do not have your doors and door locks. You have to go under crafting and have to have the right amount of materials. It's uh, 300 wood for the door. And that one's already building. And 100 wood for the key lock. So while all of that is crafting, I can show you the entire build menu. Now, things are missing because I haven't learned all the plans, but this is what you'll see as a beginning player. In the first category, you'll see 30 items that are your commonly used items. You know, you have your door, you have your stone axe, and you have your pickaxe there for uh, stone and metal and ore. The other one was for wood. Uh, this is your hammers. Oh my goodness, everything from campfires and on. In the tools category, they, I have six. You can also have flashlights and torches. Under survival, you'll have barbecues, campfires, vending machines. Uh, there was a water collection device should be coming up next right there. This has an interesting note. If another player can reach the rear panel, they will have complete access to everything you have for sale. A bota bag. Yeah, something I don't want to see. People stealing from vending machines. Fish traps. Where I am, there's a huge amount of food, so nothing to worry about. A repair bench. Planter boxes. I have not built anything because I'm using what's existing in the safe zone itself. Water purifier. The research table, I tried that today to no avail. Uh, workbenches, there are three levels, uh, one, two, and three. 
Um, so each require its own amount of resources. And wow, does it ever go up? Uh, the one uh, that's in the safe zone is a level one workbench. And this is something I'm working on right now is to build a furnace to use it to smelt all the mined ore I have. So I actually have a ton of metal ore. Uh, metal doors, very important. It makes it, uh, there's like light, medium, and high strength. And you've got wood doors and metal doors and high quality metal doors, um, all kinds of things. So this is eight building options here. And there's even a wooden window bars. Oh, there's your, this takes a lot. Your tool cupboard takes 1,000 wood and protect it by putting a lock on it. You can actually make it authorized or unauthorized. So if people are on your team, you can authorize them to use your tool cupboard or authorize it just for yourself. Resources, which I really need is low grade fuel and gunpowder. This is my next step. I've been taking the time wandering around the map trying to get uh, some of those areas out in the water that have uh, the red barrels that are full of small amounts of uh, fuel. And go ahead and craft yourself some clothing as soon as possible, not only to protect yourself from other players, but also from the cold and definitely the radiation. A lot of the big sites on the map, they call them monuments, are irradiated. So to get some of the best loot, you're going to have radiation protection. So definitely, I started a little farm, picked up some you can take cuttings in some cases, go ahead and plant those around your camp and you can grow the hemp and then go ahead and make yourself some burlap clothing to start with. And there's also a variety of body armors. Uh, there's wood armor, chest plates, trousers, headdresses, all kinds of things, bone clubs. Some words I can't say, uh, machetes. I think that one's safe. Stone spears. Sorry if you heard the audio cut out earlier. The certain uh, cloth seeds cannot be said in the video. So the cloth seeds is what I was trying to say. Uh, there's also some nice bows. I am leaning towards the compound bow. I think that'll be good. Also the crossbow that's also here next after this one. That one's nice. So you keep uh, stationary and fully drawn for that uh, compound bow to get the most damage and speed so i'm leaning towards that one although they also have this wonderful nail item uh that one looks good and also this one too so just trying to be careful with some of my wording here uh, also you can make these items and those sorry these are words i cannot say in the video uh also some more things this one looks like it'd be a lot of fun and let's see what's left. There are attachments you can place on those previous items. It looks like there's a, quite a few that are blanked out. There's also for protection of your camp, uh, netting, stone barricades, wooden floor items, and the code lock. This is great because this is so all of your team members or anybody you want to have the code to your base, they can just input the code. Uh, there was also a key lock. Also a lantern and bearskin rug I somehow managed to learn. And you can leave notes. Also from those certain cloth seeds, you can make bandages. And the game has finished crafting my wooden door and key lock. And as you can see, it is a little difficult to try to place. I'm trying to see there's the handle on that side and that side. And you're literally just moving slightly back and forth on the controller. It's probably a whole lot easier on a PC. I didn't have time to get the lock on. I heard somebody walking around. I should have got it on a lot quicker, but I did not. So let's go ahead and upgrade the walls. I did the door really quick. All you have to do is have your hammer out and hit X. X, not the hammer. There we go. So there is what the stone looks like. Let's go ahead and upgrade this one to wood. Sometimes they don't give you a choice. I haven't quite figured out how to get it to not be wood, but just, sorry, not stone, but just wood. So let's open up this door and see if we can get the lock on it. And there's the other player. I knew it. 
He ends up stealing the lock anyways, but it's rust, so what the heck. I just want him out of the way so I can get outside and show you. As you can see from this side on the right, the stone wall is very light colored and smooth. That's the soft side. So let me see if I can get outside and show you what it looks like outside. Just get out of here real quick. It's tough to do videos and play a game, so I'll put the lock on late. He stole the door. It's rust. I just want to be able to do my video for you guys. Anyways, uh, just wait for him to get out of here and I'll show you the outside. Okay, I finally got outside and the sun is up a lot more. So there, you can see how it's a lot more detailed on the outside. That's the hard side of the wall and that is the soft side of the wall. So there you go. And that is how to make a very basic camp that you don't need a lot of upkeep, especially when you're just starting out, just the wood and stone or just leave it all as the wood, but make sure you put the lock on your building. Uh, as you consume certain foods, you get seeds. So you can go ahead and within your build area, and I think probably outside also, you can go ahead and plant all of these. So a lot of the foods are a combination of food and water. So I don't need to actually go and farm or hunt things. Uh, so it's great. I can just step outside, grab a bunch of pumpkins and away I go. Uh, there's pumpkins and I also planted uh, some corn and definitely uh, the hemp farm is going. So having all of those things growing around your property. Yes, other players can pick it up but it's your responsibility to go and to uh, farm it on a regular basis. So there you go, a little bit more farming. And just remember to stash any excess that you have so you don't die with everything on your body and somebody else gets all your food and things. So be sure to store often. Thanks so very much for watching part two of the guide for new players and there will be a part three coming up. Thanks for watching.